This is a fan-generated show. If you'd like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our new Rumble channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Good evening. Welcome to the Glazov Gang. Tonight, Biden's Benghazi, the catastrophe of the traitor-in-chief. With us this evening, Jeff Cruer, the author of America's Last Chance. Jeff, what a pleasure and privilege to have you back on the Glazoff Gang. Jamie, I always look forward to coming on the program with you. And as usual, we have a lot to talk about. Yeah. The Biden administration, if even we can describe it in that way, uh, just the catastrophe unfolds in a more horrific and nightmarish way each day. But that's what happens when leftists are in power or anywhere close to you. This evening, I'm crediting our show to Daniel Greenfield's front page article, which is titled Biden's Benghazi. Everybody go read it at Front Page Magazine, Daniel Greenfield. And so we've titled this show Biden's Benghazi. And it's, uh, again, the credit goes to Daniel Greenfield. Jeff Cruer, what do you make of the horrific suicide bombing in Kabul? And uh, Biden just keeps seeming to uh, say at his press conferences, if that's even what we want to call them, that, you know, he's always, uh, I guess you could say, trying to exonerate himself and his administration. What do you make of it? You know, a few things, Jamie. Uh, one is uh, th this whole experience uh, that we've seen over the past few weeks uh, in Afghanistan has sort of, uh, you know, reminded me of uh, various debacles in the past. You know, initially, when I saw the images of the helicopter uh, leaving the uh, embassy, you know, it brought back images of Saigon in 1975. Then you had uh, the news that our Americans were uh, held hostage. Uh, we've still got hundreds of them, if not over a thousand uh, in Afghanistan waiting to be rescued. Images of Tehran and the uh, American hostages uh, there that Jimmy Carter uh, tried to rescue and couldn't rescue and failed. And it took Ronald Reagan getting elected president for the hostages to be released. And now Benghazi, now the images of Benghazi uh, dead Americans uh, on, a, on a mission to, to serve their country, uh, not protected, uh, commander-in-chief who is AWOL, uh, just a, a tragic, tragic combination of, of tragedies, disasters. I've never seen anything like it, uh, Jamie. Uh, this president uh, is much worse than anything I've ever seen. He's a total disaster. You know, Jeff, you're, you're going to have to stop beating around the bush all the time and say what you really think. Some people say, oh, well, you know, he's, he's harmless, he's old, he's, yeah. uh, you know, he means well. And, and I say no. When, when you look at the combination of policies, uh, Jamie, it's uh, really bringing us down a, a road that, that questions whether, you know, we can even survive. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's really uh, critical. And I applaud uh you know, several Republicans, I think 12 of them now in the House, calling for his uh, resignation. Yeah. Jeff, it's hard for me to know where to start with this. Um, look, let me just say that, you know, I've studied the left my whole life, dedicated my life to fighting the left. Uh, what a demonic, pernicious, um, you know, I guess we can find some other words to, you know, to describe the left. It's just vile, vile ideology and movement. And there's a double-edged sword here somewhere. There's a duality. On the one hand, many, many leftists, complete and utter morons. They don't live in the real world and all that stuff. And so part of that is the, is the Biden story. But as we very well know, it's calculated, they're full of hatred, and there's malice. And so there's two of those things happening, two of those phenomena happening. So in this particular case, on the one hand, we've got the videos coming out. You saw that recent video, there's some feminine guy dressed up in some weird feminine way prancing around the White House. Do you know what I'm referring to? Is the, uh, supposedly some funny video that was sent yeah. out by somebody that works in the press office or works for Jen Psaki. I mean, that was disturbing. Right. 
And my point is- a legitimate employee of the uh, administration. Yeah, absolutely, and my point is that this is, on the one hand, that one side of the left, this is the world they live in, you know? This is the world that they live in. And meanwhile, we have a world of the rape of Nan King in 1937. We have the Stalinist gulag, the Maoist cultural revolution, Hitler's Auschwitz, and the, and the, the Holocaust. Um, tr we, we're in a world of tremendous evil. And, you know, my first, I just want to begin with this. How scared do you think the Taliban got when they saw that video? <laughs> I think the uh, Taliban, uh, they don't respect Joe Biden. Uh, they uh, don't respect uh, his administration. They don't respect the Secretary of State. Uh, they feel like uh, they are calling the shots. Uh, what, what I get in completely incensed by, Jamie, is that these Biden administration officials keep calling the Taliban our partners. And they rely on the Taliban for help. And the Taliban is supposed to screen the people coming into the airport. Well, obviously, they either on purpose or through incompetence let uh, people go through that uh, committed the uh, suicide bombing. They killed 13 of our brave service members. So, you know, the Taliban is, are a bunch of terrorists. Uh, they're our enemy. We've been fighting them for 20 years. The Biden administration is talking about them as like partners, uh, friends. Uh, it's surreal, Jamie, it's surreal. And it's so surreal and yet very logical because it's true in terms of when Biden says that these are our partners. So. What I mean by that is, <clears throat> look, when 9-11 happened, I, I documented this in my book, United in Hate, all the leftists around me, I remember, deep down, and they showed a lot of it too, it wasn't just deep down, but they were in ecstasy. And, and, and there were a lot of leftists on the main stage, on the world stage, that celebrated 9-11 because this was the oppressed and the downtrodden coming back and striking back against capitalist oppression. Leftists like to see America hurt. Leftists like because for them America is the great Satan. And many of them don't even, you know, have this as a secret. And we know that in this particular case, and I would argue, it's just too many coincidences here. There can't be this much naivete. I mean, I don't even know anything really that much about how to conduct a military operation. But I think that me, you, and Annie could have conducted a better withdrawal from Afghanistan. You know, the, the, the two aspects to it, Jamie, I think there was American support for ending the war because we had been there 20 years. But the withdrawal was done in the absolute worst possible way to embolden the enemy and to put our uh, men and women in uniform in, in danger. You don't evacuate, I mean, your military without evacuating your uh, citizens. You don't take the military out while you still have men and women uh, there in Afghanistan that are being held hostage, that are stranded. I think these are hostages. Uh, these are people that cannot uh, just leave. They've got to, many of them are in hiding in their home. Uh, many of them are fearful of going outside. They can't get through these Taliban uh, checkpoints. They don't know whether to go to the airport. They say, go to the airport. They say, go back home. Uh, they don't know if it's gonna be uh, safe to do so. We're probably gonna leave with our military and there's still gonna be Americans uh, left in Afghanistan. That's, that's unacceptable. You know, just imagine putting Nazis and the Taliban in charge of protecting Jewish people. So, so there, there, there's malice here. This is calculated malice. The left, the left wants to destroy the United States. We know what the left is. They're in power now. When you, when you study the record of Obama, it's just impossible not to come to the conclusion that there was a deliberate effort to hurt America and American credibility throughout the world, American power. So look, what we have here is, the common sense is, okay, we're getting out of here. Get the, get the civilians out, get the equipment out, then get the military out, right? So Biden does this all in reverse. Now they've got the Taliban protecting 
the, uh, the, the airport. Now there's also the reports coming out that the, um, that the Biden administration actually gave the names of Americans and, and others to, to the Taliban of who's supposed to get out. Uh, do I even need to start with how nightmarish and uh, imbecilic this is? Uh, Jamie, it's beyond belief. Uh, just a few weeks ago, the Taliban was the enemy. Uh, the Taliban is uh, who gave sanctuary to Al Qaeda, where the 9 11 attacks were planned. The Taliban are those who believe in this radical Sharia law uh, that treats women as uh, second class citizens, that beheads people, stones people. I've seen pictures of them just in the past few days whipping people. Uh, this is not a group that we can partner with. This is not a group we can trust. These are terrorists. So the fact that we're giving them the names and addresses of our Afghan partners and uh, our Americans is mind boggling to me. I think uh, the president just signed their death sentence. And it's just, uh, you know, very just uh, uh, the latest in a series of troubling developments, along with the fact that we gave them all of our military equipment, Jamie. And uh, I, I saw a video of a Taliban uh, terrorist uh, on, in a Black Hawk helicopter uh, looking at a big uh, a hoard of uh, military supplies. There were stacks of cash that we left behind, $100 bills. Who knows how much cash uh, that we left behind for these uh, terrorists to, to utilize? I mean, it, it's incredible to me. I mean, it's absolutely mind boggling. Absolutely, um, Jeff. Uh, we often have the, our wonderful Annie Cyrus, the producer of this show, even though the viewers cannot see her, we allow her voice of wisdom into the show. Annie, you were also saying before the program about the reports of other things uh, taking place. Would you like to mention that and ask Jeff about it? Absolutely. So, Jeff, not only they have provided a list of Americans and Afghan who were al allies of our troops. They have also requested uh, from Taliban to go ahead and close certain roads as safe passage for Americans. What do you think of that? Uh, I, I, I'm just speechless, uh, Annie. I'm speechless uh, that uh, that we're we're cooperating this way and we're sort of in a subservient position to the Taliban. You know what we should be doing? We should be telling the Taliban what we're going to do, telling the Taliban that we're going to be uh, rescuing all of our American uh, folks in Afghanistan, all of the Afghan allies, and that uh, we're going to do that uh, and, and they're going to have to just stand down. Uh, but no, it seems like we're uh, asking them for permission, uh, telling them that you know, we view them as partners, depending upon them for security. And the tragedy of today uh, just should remind everyone we can't depend on a bunch of liars and killers and terrorists for any kind of support. Jeff, also, th thank you very much for that. Absolutely. Jeff, there's also this assumption in the Biden administration, we keep hearing this stuff from them, how, you know, well, the Taliban and ISIS are enemies and the, you know, they're competing with each other, all these terrorist groups, they're, they're also at war with one another. Does the Biden administration really believe? Uh, okay, first of all, we know that the Taliban uh, rest, uh, let a whole bunch of ISIS prisoners go from the jails that they uh, liberated, quote unquote. But so Biden is really under the impression and the people around him are under the impression that let's say a whole bunch of Al-Qaeda and ISIS terrorists come up to a certain place and go, we want to come in and kill these Americans, that the Taliban is going to say, nope, you can't come in. You, you know, we're enemies with you guys. It's just, it's so naive. There's the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And in the Islamic world, in the world of Islamic Jihad, there's one overriding agenda. Well, let me, let me say this, uh, Jamie, from what I understand from my research, uh, this ISIS organization or former Taliban who were disillusioned that the Taliban were not radical enough. So they broke off and formed uh, this group ISIS-K. So the Taliban had promised that Afghanistan would no longer be 
you know, a training ground for terrorists, a base for, for terrorism. And all of a sudden they've broken their promise. Uh, we, we haven't even left yet. So ISIS-K is operating. And guess what? The Taliban are close to another group that we should be familiar with. It's called Al-Qaeda. That's, uh, those are allies with the uh, Taliban. Al-Qaeda, of course, who launched 9-11. Uh, all these Al-Qaeda terrorists, as you pointed out, have been released from prison. So Al-Qaeda is running rampant in uh, Afghanistan right now. When we leave in a few days, Jamie, I can tell you, they're gonna be uh, launching all kinds of terrorist attacks from uh, Afghanistan. The camps are gonna be back. The threat is gonna be back. And the, the Taliban is not gonna be stopping that uh, at all. Jeff, we've got a new homeland for terrorism new sanctuary, a new place where they can train. They can all come together there. They're going to have a network there. We've got that going on. We've got the oppression of women and minorities and of all human beings. And it will be used as a launching pad to conduct more terrorist strikes against America and of the infidels all throughout the world. We've also got the thousands and the tens of thousands of Afghan refugees and for some reason I have a feeling that a lot of them believe in Sharia coming to the United States I mean we don't even know who they are but God forbid somebody without you know a vaccination passport comes into a restaurant you know we've really got to discipline those people this whole thing very frightening and I think on that parcel we can label that parcel as Biden entrusted the lives of American citizens and soldiers to jihadists, right? And you make a great point about the refugees. To an administration that does not protect our southern border, to an administration that is as incompetent as this administration in what we've done in Afghanistan, I do not trust this administration to properly vet 80,000 100,000, however many uh, Afghan refugees who could be coming here. I mean, people that fought with us, interpreters, uh, folks that risked their lives for uh, our, our servicemen and women, obviously uh, we need to find a place for them if we can. Uh, mm -hmm. All these other folks need to be vetted very carefully and I just don't uh, trust the Biden administration uh, to do that. And I'm worried that we can see potential uh, threats coming in from that area, threats coming in from the southern border, because that is not secure. Uh, sadly, I predict, Jamie, we're going to be seeing more uh, terror attacks on the homeland uh, in the days ahead. Frightening. Uh, Annie, your next comment and question to our wonderful guest. Jeff, where do you think uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran's uh, Hamas and uh, Hezbollah are standing on this whole scenario? Well, I think they're celebrating, uh, Annie. I, I think they're uh, uh, taking uh, a, a lot of comfort and, and joy in the fact that uh, America suffered a devastating loss at uh, 14, uh, 13 of our uh, brave men and women uh, serving uh, in uniform were killed, uh, scores more injured, uh, uh, that it was such a, a successful terror attack. You know, they said previously that Iran was the number one funder of terrorism in the world. That was before we left $85 billion in military equipment for the terrorist regime known as uh, the Taliban. So, you know, I'm, uh, it, it's a sad situation. Uh, I think all of these groups are very dangerous. Hamas, Hezbollah, Al-Qaeda, ISIS. And the sad thing is, Annie, under President Trump, we really saw tremendous progress against these uh, terror groups. He wiped out the ISIS uh, caliphate. Uh, he was uh, you know, dealing in the Afghan situation, I think in an orderly way. We had uh, tremendous progress and, and all that is, is now going in the opposite direction under this president. It's very troubling, very sad, very scary. And I think we're gonna be seeing more attacks both abroad and, and here at home. And on that inspiring note, we're gonna take a word from our sponsors. Welcome to my art studio where all the magic happens. This is the station for painting and that is the station for all the resin art I do. If you wanna check out my art, all you gotta do is go to LUTF Studio. 
dot com. While you're there, make sure to use promo code GLASSOFF. You will get yourself a wonderful discount and generous portion of your purchase will be donated to Glasgow Gang channel on YouTube. So the one and only wonderful Dr. Jamie Glasgow can keep on fighting for our freedom. And welcome back to the Glasgow Gang. We have the one and only Jeff Cruer on our program this evening. Jeff, once again, uh, thank you for joining the Glasgow Gang. Thank you, Jamie. Jeff, uh, before we went for our sponsor break, uh, you're just describing, I think, very accurately the nightmarish scenario we're finding ourselves in uh, with this Biden administration. Um, I'm trying to just picture myself off the top of my head, I think of just 12 people that I know, including some derelicts and homeless people uh, on, the, on the streets. I gather them around the table and I say, hey, Let's put the Taliban in charge of security around Kabul and around the airport. What do you guys think? I think that the majority of them, if not all of them, would go, you, Jamie, you need to get your head examined. So we've got Biden sitting with all these people, whoever is surrounding him, and they're going, yeah, let's put the Taliban in charge of security. And everybody's sitting around going, yeah, that's a, that's a really good idea. That's... It's nightmarish, Jeff. How, I mean, do we need an entire conference of psychiatrists here? What, what, what is it? Well, I mean, you make a great point. I think a bunch of uh, folks, uh, you know, average citizens, uh, we just pick them out off the street, could, could make better decisions in this administration. As you say, uh, should they keep the Taliban uh, as partners providing security? Uh, of course not. Should we withdraw our military uh, before uh, getting all of our citizens out and, and protecting all of our Americans uh, in Afghanistan? Of course not. Should we give them $85 billion in uh, military uh, equipment? Of course not. Uh, I mean, those are just uh, some of the boneheaded decisions made by Biden and his team. And, and I think his whole team should resign. I think Biden needs to go. His Secretary of Defense needs to go. His Secretary of State needs to go. His National Security Advisor needs to go. I mean, the whole team is horrific, uh, Jamie, just a, a nightmare. Absolutely, Jeff. Now, you just did a very profound and vital video called There is Something Wrong with President Joe Biden. And I think that's undeniable. So let me ask you this. Um, we've got the, the fact here that he's a leftist, surrounded by leftists, which is nightmarish enough. But there's also something wrong. Uh, I'm not sure he's all there. I'm not sure he ever was all there, but he's not all there anymore. I don't think the, the elevator is going to the top floor. We've got this whole background of the campaign where he was boasting about kids rubbing his legs in the pool and then calling report, some reporter a crackhead in the way that he asks, that the way that he acts. And, uh, I don't think the elevator, as I said, goes to the top floor anymore. It's, he's gone mentally. Would I be on the right track there? And of course, you're right on the correct track. And let's go back to that incident in the campaign, Jamie, where you had a reporter. It was an African-American host of a uh, radio program asking uh, Biden uh, about, you know, whether he would take a, a African-American report, I think, for CBS asking Biden whether he would take a uh, mental competency uh, test. He freaked out and uh, then said he wouldn't do it and then uh, asked the guy uh, whether he was a junkie, uh, whether he was on crack. And uh, that's what you see from Biden. When he's challenged, you know, he lashes back in anger. Uh, and there's so many wide uh, uh, array of uh, different uh, responses that uh, he gives when he, uh, I think, feels like he, he can't uh, grasp something. So he re responds in anger. Sometimes you'll see him uh, sort of whispering uh, during a, a speech where he's acting weird. Uh, today, I don't know if you saw during the uh, comments that he made, he put his head down for a long period of time. It just seemed very, uh, very, very strange. You're right, uh, there's something definitely wrong with him. Yeah. Ronnie Jackson, the former uh, physician for President Obama and President Trump, has said that the 25th Amendment needs to be utilized. He needs to be removed. 
because he's not mentally competent uh, to be president. That's a former White House physician. I trust his judgment. I think he's right. From what I see, Biden is suffering from a, from a definite mental decline. And we can't have his president, Jamie, someone that is not mentally competent. We can't. Absolutely. What gives me hope, though, and I think gives a lot of us hope, is we've got Kamala Harris, who recently started cackling and laughing when the reporters were trying to ask her about what's happening in Kabul. I mean, this is very inspiring that Kamala might become the president if Biden goes, right? You know, Dumb and Dumber uh, comes to mind, the movie. Uh, I mean, uh, we, we have a nightmare scenario. And I think we just have to take one uh, of these threats at a time. Obviously, I think Biden has got to go. If Harris then moves in and becomes president, uh, I think uh, we, 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 we hold her to uh, a high standard. If she doesn't meet the high standard, then they need to uh, pursue impeachment charges against her because she's already uh, been involved in many things that I think would merit impeachment. Remember, Donald Trump was impeached for making a phone call. Uh, Donald Trump was impeached for telling people at a, at a rally uh, to patriotically and, and peacefully make your voices heard. Yeah. And this guy, Biden and Harris, have been engaged in so much more uh, than that, so much uh, worthier of impeachment. So Republicans need to uh, step up their game and be a lot more aggressive uh, in, in dealing with these folks uh, and making that case. Marjorie Taylor Greene and a few others have been, but more Republicans need to. Jeff, everything is just so surreal now, uh, not to mention... You know, I put on the news and we see Biden and Kamala. Then we go outside, we see these people walking around with masks on and trying to talk to you with masks on. Just everything is surreal. Um, but now, the other day, a reporter is asking Biden about the Americans left behind in Afghanistan and Biden starts to mock him and, and makes a mocking statement like, you'll be the first to know, something like that. Then the White House, when they put that feed out, they killed that part. They, they censored that part. Uh, very interesting. Then Biden in general, when he's talking, he's always like, well, I'm really going to get in trouble for this one. And, uh, well, uh, yeah, well, I've been told to ask now this person. To, somebody's controlling him from on top, right? Yes, that is a very shrewd point, uh, Jamie, because... He's always saying that I'm going to get into trouble uh, for this. Then he chooses his reporters from a list, sort of like it's been a pre-approved list. He knows what the questions are. He knows that they're not going to ask him too tough of a question. He's ready for the answers. Did Donald Trump ever use a pre-approved uh, list to uh, choose reporters? Of course not. I've never even seen that from Obama or any other uh, president. Uh, I, I just think that, again, raises questions about his competency. And as you point out brilliantly, it raises questions about who is behind the scenes calling the shots here. Is it Obama? Is it Susan Rice? Mm. Is it Valerie Jarrett? Who, who's, who's back there? Because Joe is obviously uh, taking orders from someone. Annie, let me hand the uh, program to you now. I appreciate that. Here's a question, Jeff. I don't agree that Biden should be impeached. I think he should be tried and face real punishment and consequences for committing treason. Well, that's an interesting point, uh, Annie, and I think there, there are grounds for that. But uh, my question would be the process to pursue something like that, uh, that uh, I think... Uh, you know, that would be even a step further than impeachment, even a more aggressive step. And, and, and who, would, uh, who would pursue that? I mean, citizens can't just uh, put forward uh, treason charges. Wouldn't we have to have Congress do that? Or wouldn't we have to have someone from the Department of Justice to do that? And I, I, I don't see that happening, Annie. Are we are still, we the people, are still hold the power to petition our government. So if enough Americans would petition the Congress, we could force their hands or at least show them that this time around, we are serious about the issue. 
Well, and, and I agree that we, we should do that and we should petition the Congress. We should make our voices heard. We should certainly get more engaged. Uh, but, you know, the Congress is still controlled by Democrats. Uh, I don't know if uh, enough independent, honest Democrats would break free. On every one of these votes, uh, Annie, they, they've been voting in lockstep with each other. I mean, there's like no, uh, no one that breaks free. So I, I think for something like that, we might have to wait until after the midterm elections and there's a new party in control of, uh, of Congress. And uh, I agree with you, though. I, I think there's, uh, you know, so many things that, that he's done that have been uh, very, very disturbing. And if we had an independent Congress, if we had an independent Department of Justice, it might be a different matter. But unfortunately, we don't. And I, I think the overall point is that the things that are being done and perpetrated here, one could make the argument that one could describe these things as criminal. Well, dereliction of duty, uh, putting Americans uh, in harm's way, blood mm. on his hands, responsibility for uh, the death of these uh, individuals. You know, mm -hmm. the fact that uh, he has allowed the southern border to be open, where we have all these uh, COVID infected individuals going all over the country, mm. spreading COVID again. How many people have died as a result of that? Mm. Could that lead to another terror attack from one of these individuals coming in from the southern border? He yeah. can't shut down border security. So there are many different ways to look at what he's done as potentially criminal, uh, Jamie. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Jeff, 75,000 vehicles left behind approximately, these are just some reports that I was reading, 600,000 weapons, 208 aircraft left behind, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Overall disaster, also the credibility of America uh, damaged. We're a laughing stock now. Uh, for instance, if the Chinese decided to take Taiwan and if somebody during the meeting said, well, wait a minute, we might have to deal with Biden, I think they might just start roaring laughing. I mean, that's side-splitting funny stuff, right, for them? Well, that's why I call him Beijing Biden, because uh, he's doing their bidding. I mean, they've got their man in the White House, uh, Jamie. He's not going to stand up to China. Now, maybe Donald Trump would. I know Donald Trump would. Uh, I, under Donald Trump, Taiwan is safe. With Joe Biden as president, uh, they are not safe at all. And you know China is uh, licking their chops. They're looking uh, at this as sort of an easy opportunity for them. I'm very worried about uh, free China, independent uh, free China, Taiwan. And uh, I think you're definitely right. I think that's exactly what the communists are thinking. They've got, they have benefited more than any other country during these last two years, uh, financially, in a geopolitical sense. You know, China is riding high right now, and uh, the United States has really suffered tremendously uh, under uh, Biden. And I think uh, Taiwan could be something that we're talking a lot about uh, in, in the days ahead. Remember what they did to Hong Kong? We had those freedom uh, fighters there, those protesters. Look at how they squelched that. Look at what they did to the leaders. They threw them in uh, jail. Uh, I'd say that uh, they're definitely looking at Taiwan. Jeff, if you were to give a report card on Obama's handling of domestic and foreign policy up till now, 10 being the best mark, excellent, zero being failure, on a scale of zero to 10, what would you give Biden? I, I would give him a zero minus. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, if there is uh, below zero, I mean, you know, we have below freezing, Jamie. I think we need to go below zero for both domestic, foreign, national security policy, border policy, every type of policy you can think of, it's been below zero. Frightening stuff. One can only imagine what's next. Jeff Cruer, so many viewers right now are inspired on the edge of their seats, wondering if they don't already, of course, know about you and everything that you do, where can they find you and where do you recommend that they go? Uh, Jamie, thank you again. Uh, it's been great to be with you and Annie. Uh, my website is my last name, Cruer, and that's C-R-O-U-E-R-E dot -E net. And I've got info there about my book. Uh, my videos are posted there. 
uh, also information about my uh, shows, uh, columns that I've done. So it's a good place to get information. So I recommend folks uh, check it out, crewair.net. Uh, Jeff Cruer, you are a gentleman and a scholar and a very brave and valiant freedom fighter. Thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for being a member of the Glazoff Gang. Thank you, Jamie. Great to be with you. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining the Glazoff Gang this evening. We shall see you soon. Good night. Dear ladies and gentlemen, I recently got one of Mike Lindell's pillows and comforters at mybillow.com and I started getting some of the most restful sleeps in my life. And you can do the same. Go to MyPillow.com and use code GG21 to get incredible and amazing discounts. Or just call 1-800-854-0673. While you're doing that, you'll know that you're supporting Mike Lindell, a true American hero fighting a true American cause. And you'll also be supporting the Glazoff Gang. Thank you. May God bless you, and may God bless America.